Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you from my 17 years of stick welding experience, mobile stick welding, the two rods that I believe you could buy and keep on your mobile welding setup, whether you're a DIY welder, just doing knickknacks and whatnot in your garage, uh, hobby welder, whatever, uh, whether you're a farmer, again, you have your own setup, farmer, rancher, and you do your own welding and your own maintenance on fence and stuff around the farm, a little bit of equipment repair, this, that, and the other. I want to share with you two rods because I want you to be able to get a clean answer because I know there's a lot of noise and a lot of information being tossed around out there and it can be confusing. The reason it's confusing is because there are tons of different variables. I posted a short the other day about what rod I recommended on metal buildings and somebody commented and said uh, that they would recommend 7018 all the way on structural and I don't disagree with that. What I said in the short was that on metal buildings most of it you can use 6010 versus 7018. The only place where I recommended in that short to use 7018 was on the base plates. That was because, again, of these different variables, that was because I had in my mind the 150 by 100 Indico kit that we built and we shared here on the channel. And all of it was 11 gauge and 14 gauge square tubing and C-Perlin. So if you're welding on something that's really thin material like that, 6010 is okay from my experience. And because of what it was and how much weld there was on it and how big it was and how many cross members there was, you know, all that goes into play versus other types of metal buildings where they use um, I-beam for their trusses, you know, their their columns and their trusses all in one. Or, uh, I mean, you could go so far into depth with these details. Most structural buildings that aren't c perlin or thin material, you're going to want to use 7018 or a combination of both. You can use 6010 for a first pass and then put 7018 over it in all those situations also again i'm solely speaking from experience and so anyway that's what kind of prompted me to make this video but i want you as a diyer hobbyist farmer whatever to just be able to buy your own setup or if you have your own whatever but if you don't buy your own stick welder buy your own setup and i want you to just confidently walk in the store and say i need some 186010 and some 332 7018 that's all i need and then it, like it's that simple you know um the sizes change compared to not only the thickness of material that you're welding but it's not so much the thickness although it is but it's more well actually it's safe to say it's not so much the thickness it's the how long it takes you so in other words back when i worked on drilling rigs I didn't use very much 332 7018. I used a lot of 18 7018 and 532 7018. But that's because we had lots of welding to do. So whenever you have lots of welding to do and you burn one little 332 7018 and you only get that far, you're like, okay, something's got to give here. I need a bigger welding rod so I can go further than, you know, three inches or four inches with a 332. You know what I mean? So, so it really depends on how much welding that you're going to be doing when it comes to diameter but as far as knickknacky stuff welding in your garage around the farm uh, these two sizes 18 60 10 and 332 7018 are the rods that i recommend and i'm so thankful that that's what i'm here doing right now because i'm able to help those of you you know the masses trying to get into welding or trying to you know uh, cut cost or get into you know welding something you've always wanted to do or whatever that looks like and primarily you can do a lot of stuff i can do a lot of uh heavy material with 332 it's just going to take me longer a little longer you know so that's why that's why i recommend these because they're it's just it's uh super helpful so i wanted to go ahead and name a couple of examples like around the farm here so 6010 stuff that i recommend 6010 on is what i've already mentioned thin square tubing so like loaf and sheds thin square tubing uh c perlin anything like 14 gauge and, and under even 11 gauge 1 8 and and less 6010 will work on on mo like 
I've, I've mentioned a loafing shed because a loafing shed, uh, it, it's not like holding a lot of weight versus like my A-frame, I would recommend 7018 because it's load bearing. You know, there's a lot of, there's, that's, uh, we'll get into that more here in a minute, you know, load bearing stuff, 7018. But uh, like loafing sheds, pipe fence, if you're gonna build your own gate out of two and three eighths pipe or uh, out of inch and half pipe, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, you can weld it up with one eighth 6010. Uh, pipe fence caps, one eighth 6010. Clips to run cable, one eighth 6010. The one thing that I've mentioned here on the channel before, when it comes to fence, that I would recommend 7018 over 6010 is sucker rod. So because mild steel, mild steel is what most pipe fence, most handrails and stuff are made out of. And since probably all metal does this, not just mild steel, but we're talking about mild steel. So uh, since mild steel shrinks whenever the weather cools off and expands whenever it gets hotter, and the type of material that sit, that a sucker rod is, sucker rod is also known as cold roll or hot roll, like it's but I think sucker rod is actually made a little different than uh, cold roll and hot roll. I think it's harder, essentially. That's kind of a slang term, harder versus harder metal versus softer metal. Um, those aren't the actual proper term, scientific terms, but that's the slang term that we use in pipeline world, harder pipe versus softer pipe. But the harder material is more likely to crack, and so sucker rod is a harder material, so therefore, if you weld all of it with 6010, which you can, there's nothing wrong with that, and it, it not you know, 90% of your welds would probably hold for a really long time. There's nothing wrong with welding sucker rod with 6010, but from a professional welder's standpoint, I like to help those of you just getting into it, and I like to recommend pro tips, if you will, to keep you from coming back having to come back to a project and repair it later that's my goal my goal is to help you become a better diy welder a better form welder you know um, by sharing the tips that i learned over all my years of stick welding so sucker rod 7018 most other fence any other types of fence i recommend 6010 hanging a gate 7018 because there's there's just that one weld holding it to the post you know so I recommend 7018. Any kind of weight bearing or load bearing, like I've already mentioned, my A-frame, 7018. Uh, any kind of lifting pad eyes, 7018. Anything to do with a receiver hitch, 7018. Uh, uh, on like implements and stuff, again, with anything with the, with the part that's hooked to the tractor, 7018. And like I said, on metal buildings, did I already say this? On metal buildings, if the, uh, columns and the and the trusses or the rafters whatever you call them are i-beam then i recommend 7018 or if the whole metal building or lane two or uh or a canopy or structure is heavier material like channel or uh like three sixteenths or quarter inch material 7018 pro tip here if you have a project where you're going to be where you where you know you want to finish it off with 7018 but you got a little gap and you're not as confident with 7018 uphill, you can use 6010 to fill your gap uphill or downhill. Um, I do believe, I'm not positive about this, but I do believe uh, anything welded uphill is a little stronger than downhill. Could be wrong about that. If you know more, let me know down in the comments below. But uh, I know welding uphill with 6010 is, uh, fills the gap a little faster. So, But that can be a challenge depending on how you've learned, I guess. But um a combination of the two is is my pro tip so fill your gap with 6010 and cap with 7018. another fun fact that i just thought of that i wanted to mention in this video is a lot of people get confused with the numbers on the welding rod and again with all the information out here people have this misconception that 7018 can be welded downhill because it's an all position rod so 70 18 uh, what would that be the third number it's been so long since i've even studied the numbers but i believe the third number is the position so one would be all positions 
So position just means vertical. Just because a welding rod is made for vertical welding, that position doesn't specify whether you start at the top and go down or start at the bottom and go up. And I'm not even saying you can't weld 7018 downhill. Go for it. I'm not saying it won't hold, but I just know, again, from my experience, and a lot of people I've been around in the industry, the best way to run 7018 is uphill. Uh, now versus with this rod some could argue the same you know maybe it's only supposed to be ran uphill but you know a lot of people weld with it downhill and uphill so so i'm not saying you can't weld it downhill uh it's just not it's not common or whatever but by all means practice get good at it uh, but i just wanted to point that out that just because something is an all position rod doesn't mean that it's you know designed or best used to weld one direction or the other so using 7018 as an example there. So I'm trying to think of any other examples, but I hope this video helps. I, I hope you got the gist of it. Rule of thumb, load bearing, 7018. If it's not load bearing and it's thin material, 6010 will be just fine. Uh, I've answered this in a short, but in case you haven't seen it, your 7018 for your DIY projects Again, speaking from 17 years of experience, I've welded a lot of stuff on lots of farms and lots of stuff without, without a rod oven. You do not have to have your 7018 in a rod oven, but when it comes to more higher caliber work, like pipeline vessels, structural out in, you know, out where, uh, like heavier material, heavier material and and your you know your stuff's got to be signed off on you got to be qualified to weld on it a rod oven is good and in fact it burn i've mentioned this in previous videos your welding rod will burn better if it's in a rod oven but from my 17 years of real world experience i never keep my 7018 rods in a rod oven and i know lots of other guys around that i've you know grown up with in my career around here that you know work on metal buildings and fence and stuff like this and uh they don't keep their stuff in a rod oven so you do not have to have your 7018 in a rod oven for this type of work so again hope this video was helpful if it was hit that like button have an awesome morning afternoon evening don't forget to check out our website arosfelding.com for more helpful resources if you're looking for gift ideas arosfelding.com we've got gift cards Scroll all the way to the bottom, you can find my favorites page where there's several different brands that I recommend and that I use as far as um, tools, welding gear, uh, clothes that I wear, etc. They're on the favorites page. Be a good place to find gifts this holiday season. Thanks for watching, and remember, learn something every day.